The tables of data, different statistical tests, and model results we see in published scientific papers are beautifully formatted. But the road from data to such tables is often bumpy, has numerous steps, and is prone to mistakes. Well, with GT summary package, you'll get these results in a few lines of code. So let's get into it and start with the data. The table summary function automatically recognizes continuous, categorical, and dichotomous variables in your data, calculates appropriate descriptive statistics like counts and percentages for categorical and median plus interquartile range for numeric variables, includes the amounts of missing values in each variable, and automatically creates footnotes with explanations and abbreviations. However, most of the time we need to get descriptive stats for some groups, for example, for drug A and drug B from the treatment variable, which can be easily done by using by argument. And if we need to go even further and calculate descriptive stats for different drugs inside of different grade levels, we can create a stratify table by using table summary function inside of table strata function, where we also specify strata argument. But while descriptive stats is fine, we often would rather compare some groups and see whether they significantly differ. And here is where the real magic of GT summary starts. Namely, the addP function automatically detects a variable type, applies correct statistical tests to check the difference between treatment drugs, and displays p-values and names of statistical tests in the table. But wait, there is more. There is a whole family of add functions which enable you to pimp your table with more useful information. Namely, add a column of p-values corrected for multiple testing in order to reduce fall discovery rate, add overall summary statistics, add number of observations, add confidence intervals for medians, proportions, etc., and even add labels of descriptive statistics to each variable. The add helpers are actually just one of the four ways to improve your table. And I'll show you the next three very soon. But for now, have a look at the last function from add family, namely add difference, which can be used instead of add p. It is useful because a difference between groups is actually what we want most of the time. Here, you'll get different statistical tests by default, namely Welsh t-test for difference in means, and two sample tests for equality of proportions. But while default statistical tests save you tons of time and nerves, what if we want to apply specific tests to specific variables? Well, you can of course easily do that, and here is how. First of all, you can change all tests at once. For example, if all of our data is normally distributed, <laughs> which would probably never happen, but anyway, if all of our data is normally distributed, we can apply t-tests to all continuous variables via test argument inside of add p function. And since it makes sense to use mean and standard deviation for t-tests instead of the default median and interquartile range, we can specify the descriptive statistics of our choice by using statistic argument inside of table summary function. Similarly, we can force at p to apply Fisher's tests to all categorical variables. Moreover, we can specify any descriptive statistics and any test we wish for any particular variable. The variables which were not explicitly specified, for example grade, will be analyzed with default tests, and the footnote will be automatically extended in order to include all the necessary information so that you have less things to worry about. Here's a quick example of paired t-test for continuous and paired McNamara test for categorical variables. You just need to make sure you have an ID column and have complete pairs in the data. Tests are amazing, but the real power of GT summary is that it can easily summarize regression results. But before we summarize regressions, I have to give you the second useful kind of pimping your table, namely by using table summary arguments. Since you are already familiar with by and statistic arguments, you can imagine that there are more, right? And here are some of the most useful ones. Label changes variable names. Digits changes the number of rounded decimal places. 
Missing determines where the missing observations are reported. Missing text changes the name of the missing data. Type changes variable type for specific variables, affecting which summary statistics are displayed. Sort changes the type of sorting for categorical variables, where alphanumeric is a default, but when we change it to frequency, tumor response, and patient died, variables will be sorted differently. Percent determines how percentage statistics are calculated and displayed. While the default is column, you can choose row or cell. Include allows to either choose or remove particular predictors. For example, let's remove month to death for now, but make a separate survival study on that in a moment. And of course, every function we use has its own arguments. For instance, if you want to determine the number of decimal places in only p-values, not in the rest of the table, use p-value fan argument inside of add p function. Now, we finally arrived at the best part of GT summary, namely summarizing regression models. GT summary supports most of the classic models, like generalized linear, survival or mixed effect models, and many more, and this support is steadily growing. For example, the table regression function takes a multiple Bayesian logistic regression and returns a publication-ready and beautifully formatted table of model results. Here, the exponentiate true argument displays odds ratios instead of the default but less intuitive log odds ratios. Now, remember we removed time to death predictor from the table for a separate analysis? Well, let's use time to death in a Cox proportional hazard regression and see a beautiful output table regression function produces. But table regression function is just a beginning. Table UV regression conducts univariate models with every variable in our dataset. We only need to define the method we want to use for modeling determine the response variable, which in our case is called uh, response, and specify modeling family in the methods arguments argument. And voila, we have three separate logistic regressions beautifully combined into one table. Conducting several univariate Cox regressions is even more simple. I quickly learned to love table UV regression function because the same few lines of code would easily conduct 30 or even 300 univariate models if my dataset is huge. So it saves time. But what saves time even more is combining different tables with each other. Check this out. Using only one function, table merge, we can put two tables we just created side by side and see the influence of the same predictors on two completely different response variables. We can even name those tables, for example, tumor response for univariate logistic regressions and time to death for univariate Cox regressions we just conducted. The footnote is again automatically displaying appropriate units for each model type. But even more useful is a meta table where descriptive statistics is combined with the results of both univariate and multivariate models. And similarly to summary tables of statistical tests, we can easily customize our regression tables in three different ways. First, we can add more useful information to our regression table. For instance, add n adds a number of observations in each level of categorical variables. Add an event adds a number of positive events of the outcome. Add global p adds a global p value for every variable, which is useful if we want to pre select potentially most influential variables for the further multivariate analysis, with let's say p value of under 0.2. Add Q adjusts p values with full discovery rate correction for multiple testing as a default method, which can easily be changed to Bonferroni or any other correction method. Add significant stars, add significant stars, and by default removes p values and confidence intervals, but we can choose to keep them. Secondly, we can modify the appearance of our table by modifying headers, captions, or footnotes or by sorting variables by significance. And finally, we have some aesthetics helpers like bold or italic, which help to beautify our labels even more. I personally found the bold p function to be the most interesting. 
because I can specify the threshold under which the p-values will be displayed bold. Well, GT Summary has many more useful features that I can't cover in this video without completely overwhelming you. But some of the honorable mentions are cross tables, possibility to handle survey data, use predefined designs of tables with themes, report statistical results inside of the body of text with inline text function, and customize the table even further using a massive functionality of GT package. So feel free to explore it by yourself. But there is one thing left which you absolutely need to know how to do, namely saving these beautiful tables as a picture or as Microsoft Word document. Foldit will use a flex table package and first convert our summary table into the flex table object, which we then save as an image or as a publication ready doc file. Now, knowing how to visualize perfect tables, you absolutely need to learn how to perfectly visualize data and model results. Fortunately, you can also do it with only a few lines of code, which you can learn all about in less than 10 minutes from this video.